Hey guys, um, I thought you all would be interested in seeing little Hannah instead of me all the time. Um, in either case, um, I was watching a video by our sister Tamara Davis yesterday and also watching a video that our brother did over at Born for Battle 74, I believe it is. And uh, in either case, that was making me think on something I had seen a couple of days ago. And that was the Mark of the Beast. Somebody had sent me a video um, speaking on the Mark of the Beast. And, um, and I thought, well, I've seen these kind of videos before. And it was showing the microchip um, and the company that um, does the microchip. And uh, the one that did those uh, 50 different employees up at a company in Wisconsin um, here back last fall. I believe it was in August. But in either case, that, that got me to thinking about the company itself. And it was something that I'd never really quite noticed before. And the name of the company was Three Square that made uh, the microchip. And I thought, well, okay, three square. Um, well, from math class, we all know that three to the exponent, the exponent of two, which is three squared, um, is nine. And I got to thinking about three squares, like three squares a day, like people won't be able to eat without it eventually or buy or sell. And um, I thought that that was kind of telling in and of itself. But I thought about three cubes, and a lot of times the occult or the um, uh, will use the cube as a symbol. Um, it's kind of a Luciferian symbol, as we know, uh, sim similar to the pyramid or the triangle. But if you look at three cubes laid out or three squares, um, think about three squared three different times you know it would be like three squared is nine three squared is nine and three squared is nine and if we flip that upside down like so many times um that the occult will send messages to each other and kind of try to have it hidden and actually that's one of the definitions of occult is hidden um but it, it, it's it's really in plain sight as well so if we look at the three squared three times, it would be 999, which upside down is 666. And um, the Bible does tell us, um, let he who has wisdom count the number of the beast. And don't we know that, um, that the beast, other than the Antichrist himself, is a system? Um, so it will be the beast system. And so I thought, well, it, it's... That's something I'd never noticed before. I don't know if some of you all had thought of it or not. Um, but also, when I was looking at Tamara Davis's video, she had said, Mark of the Beast. And then she went into the parable about the wheat and the tares. And something that I had noticed as well is in the last chapter of um, Revelation chapter 22, um, the Lord tells us three separate times, basically... Behold, I come quickly. And I'd never noticed that it was three times that he had said it in that very last chapter. Um, but I just thought that I would read that with you guys because I really believe that the parable of the wheat and the tares goes along with Revelation chapter 22. Um, starting at verse 10, it says, And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand, isn't it though? And verse 11 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he which is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work will be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates of that city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whomsoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you that these things these things in the churches 
I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride of morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let he who heareth say, Come, and let he who is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him drink from the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book, that if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that have been written in this book. And that if any man shall take away the words from this book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He that testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that's the very end of the book, guys. And and um, God bless the reading of his word. And uh, and to me, that verse uh, 11 in chapter 22, and I, I know both of those are double numbers, you know, for some of you all that see 11 and 11 obviously is 22. And I think it's rather telling that that is the last book of the, of the Bible. But if we look at um, chapter 22, which is 11, 11, and actually look at verse 11, it, it says, let he who is filthy be filthy still, and let he who is righteous be righteous still, and let he who is unjust be unjust still, and let he who is um, who is holy be holy still. So there comes a point where basically God says it's over, that the time of, of, of grace is over, I'm coming for my people, um, sheep on the right and goats on the left, or in other words, bundle up the tares and they'll be burned in the fire and um, bring the wheat into my barn, and uh, we know that that is uh, foreshadowed and said and, and said outright literally, um, not just in a parable, but this is pretty plain language, I think, that it's used at the very end of, uh, of uh, the Bible, and so it, those are some things to think on, guys, in the days that we're in. As we see prophecy unfolding, um, let us tell all that we can of Jesus before it's too late, before that trumpet sounds and, uh, and the time of the sheep on the right and the goats on the left is here because it will be hard to uh, withstand this mark of the beast. And, um, and even though that it, it, they're going to tell people um, people will be lining up in droves for it because they'll think that it's the only way that they can buy and sell, and it will be. Um, and it will be hard for people to make that choice at that time um, to basically watch their family starve to death right in front of them and themselves as well. And uh, and we know that from what the Bible says, there won't there will become a time where it won't be just something you can do voluntarily, but that it will be not just offered to people, but it will be a choice that they'll have to make to either take the mark or basically perish. And uh, But we know that the Lord said that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the second death is known as hell but everlasting life, and we are an eternal spirit, can be spent with the Lord Jesus, even if it gets to that point, and, and some are left behind, that they will have the choice um, to have eternal life in, in Jesus. So it says, fear not the one who can kill the body, but yea, I say, fear him who can, can kill the body and then cast the spirit into hell. So, um, Guys, I love you all, and I hope that that makes sense to some of you guys out there. And um, let's keep our eyes and ears open as we um, as we wait on the Lord and tell others of His saving grace. And um, I'm sure we'll talk real soon.